I'll get started with a brief opening statement again. Um, another good scrimmage, uh, beautiful day. Uh, seems like we got out of there without any major injuries. We got quite a few plays in. Um, felt like we improved over last week in, in certain areas. I feel like we're getting closer uh, as, we, as we need to be. Uh, we're inching closer and closer to the season. So uh, we will have another opportunity to put it down and, and have another scrimmage next week. Um, but uh, felt like we improved in uh, offensively in particular. Felt like we we're a little more consistent moving the football. Still got to execute in the red zone and get the ball in the end zone. Uh, but had some really good drives. All right, guys, if you all want to do the raise hand, uh, Josh is covering another game. So we've got one question in from him. Uh, what position group on your team uh, outside of quarterback do you think would be most impacted if the number one group had to sit because of COVID, positive COVID tests? Um, yeah, it's a difficult question because I feel like, you know, it would greatly affect all positions, um, you know. Uh, you know, I'd have to say maybe offensive line, you know, just because of the continuity. Uh, you know, we like to play a, a lot of guys, but uh, still I think that, that there's, uh, you know, that first group has a lot of experience and uh, is extremely physical. So um, I think that position group would be drastically hurt if we lost all five of them. John Hale. Mark, Eddie mentioned the other day that not only on, on those lines of players, you've got a plan for what happens if coaches are unavailable for a given week, who's going to call the plays if he couldn't go or whatever. How much of that talking have you already done, and do you have those contingency plans in place? Yeah, you have to have those uh, plans in place. And, um, you know, fortunately we have a, uh, some continuity w within our staff and some guys that uh, have a pretty good idea of how I think and where – uh, you know, want to be aggressive and where you would go for it on certain situations. So, uh, um, you know, if I went down, you know, I, I, I have a lot of trust in, in uh, our coaches. Um, and then, you know, fortunately, we have guys that are coordinator types on both sides of the line of scrimmage and, and along with special teams. We have a lot of experience there. So uh, I feel good. I don't think I, I want to get into all the details of all that. Um, but uh, I, let's just say I feel good about the – experience of our staff. Jeremy. Hey, Mark, good to see you. Uh, you mentioned that how you, you like to play a lot of players. How difficult is it this season, right out the gate, playing Auburn and all SEC schedule, typically in that first game, first two or three, you like to play a lot of the young guys, see some of the inexperienced guys, see what you got. Uh, going into this game, do you still see yourself trying to play a lot of players? typically like you do how, you know, early in the season or or will you be a little bit more kind of controlled? No, I think we have to really work hard through camp, um, you know, to put as much pressure on them and to put them in as many game-like situations as we possibly can um, because you are going to need to play players. Um, as you know, uh, early in the season uh, in Alabama with an 11 o'clock kickoff, it'll be hot and it'll be muggy and uh, – you know, so just that alone early in the season, guys are amped up, hyped up. Um, you know, they've been waiting a long time. So uh, you get anxious like that. Um, you know, it certainly helps to have some guys to rotate in throughout the entire game. Um, so we're going to need to continue to work on our depth and we're going to need to continue to work on those young guys and put them in a position um, to be effective. That was, <clears throat> you know, along the same lines as you're, what you're talking about, Jeremy. It was one of my notes after the scrimmage. You know, we got to get uh, – I got to get back to uh, getting some coaches off the field. We're not on the field. We were using headsets. We were trying to be game-like situation. But there was nobody in the press box today. And there was just an awful lot of communication going on down there. And there always is. You guys have been to open practices before, seen scrimmages. And there's a lot of, a lot of communication, a lot of talking going on. And, uh, you know, coaches just, you know, adjusting, align you know, alignments and simple things. But – uh, <clears throat> that is something that I, you know, took note of, uh, you know, was that we have to be better uh, with that communication. we got to get coaches off the field. Um, you know, fans, it doesn't appear it's going to be that much of an issue as far as crowd noise this year. But still, uh, you want the players to play. And I don't want to uh, hear um, five, six coaches talking and communicating before every single play. The players have to have confidence to go out there and execute the call 
and realistically, our coordinators need to know what we can do and what we can't do, and uh, <clears throat> and how we can execute it, and and what we're best at, and and uh, you know, sometimes through camp, uh, you know, I may lose my patience with that because you want to be further along. Um, but again, I was a coordinator a long time, and so right now we're throwing everything at them. We have an awful lot in the playbook, and sometimes that gets a little sloppy for me, and uh, I want to see that tidied up a bit before next week. John Wong. Hi, Mark. This time of the year, you always talk about all these unknown factors, and I know COVID is a big unknown, so let's just kind of discount that. In regard to your team, what are maybe the one or two unknown factors that keep you awake at night right now? Um, you know, I don't, I don't know if there's any one or two unknown factors that keep me up at night. There's, there's many things that keep me up at night. So um, there's a lot to do. Uh, you've heard me talk in years past. Uh, it's no secret when you go into the first game, when you go into a new year, it's different. It's new. This, this team's got a new uh, identity. And, um, you know, we are who we are. And, and truthfully, you know, I have a pretty good idea. I have a lot of confidence in a lot of the groups and, and a lot of the guys. But uh, until you get out there and play, there are a lot of unknowns. And um, that's why – that's what makes it exciting. That's what makes the first game exciting. And you'll know more. I can answer that uh, uh, better after the first game because I'll have a little bit more clarity on, on exactly who we are. Um, like I said, we have a good idea. And uh, we've been uh, pretty defined – and who we've been um, for several years and, and uh, have that continuity in the staff and have a pretty good idea, but we're also experimenting and, and constantly trying to get better and trying to grow uh, and get better in all areas of the program. Jeff Drummond. Hey, Mark, I'm curious about, uh, you know, through a few scrimmages, how the kicking game is, is coming along for you and what you've seen out of those guys. Uh, yeah, rough, um, <clears throat> rough hit uh, five or six today, and um, you know really did a nice job. And Max is is Max. Uh, he was you know very effective and uh, hit, hit some really nice punts. We worked on some backed up today on the one coming out, and uh, really hit a nice one to flip the field and did some good things like he always does. Uh, but rough uh, actually missed. I wanted. I think it was his first field goal of the day. And um, and then then hit five straight. His last one was 51 or 52 yards, and it was it was solid. It was right down right down the middle there, and a long one. Uh, so uh, that was good to see. Coach, when the uh, workouts began during the pandemic, you talked about trying to maintain the protocols that you need to be safe and. You talked about needing leadership from your veteran players in more than just your usual way. How would you describe the leadership you've gotten from your veteran players in, in such an unusual time? Um, yeah, it's it's a good good point and good question and, and something we constantly work on. And uh, thank goodness, as, as you know, I've been grinding that up hard and working on that very, you know, put a lot of time and effort into that for years. And uh, it's very important on a year like uh, this year. And uh, that was one of the uh, talking points after practice today was uh, to continue uh, to grow and to have the leaders lead because, uh, you know, just certain things like, you know, just team bonding and spending time. I can't get the whole team in a meeting room. We do Zooms and they're in, they're in breakout rooms so their coaches are in there and, there and there's some communication going on that way. But it's very difficult for me not to be able to spend that time that I normally would in a team meeting and individually with the players just being around each other more, spending time and, and uh, growing and grow, you know, continuing to build those personal relationships that are, that are so important. You know, if you, if you go back to last year and early in the years and the struggles we had and, um, you know, I remember going into a staff meeting and, and really, uh, you know, putting a lot of emphasis back on the, the team and, and the, the, the behaviors and the relationships. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it certainly helped us down the stretch. And, 
and right now not being able to do a lot of the things that we normally do uh, with the continuity and the team building and, and the relationships with our players, um, you know, there, there, there has to be some awareness to that. And that's what I brought attention to the, to the leaders and to the team uh, to make a conscious effort uh, to, to extend themselves to teammates and people that they wouldn't normally do and uh, spend time with each other because it's hard to get in big groups. So it's a great question. It's a great point. And I think it's going to be important uh, to football teams uh, throughout this year. John Hale. Mark, uh, Demarcus Harris has gotten a few mentions recently. I think it's easy to forget he was on the two deep all last year and might not have redshirted if you had a healthy quarterback. But but what do you like about him and what has he done so far in camp to, to kind of get notice? Yeah, he, he, he just always is – he's one of those guys kind of just puts his head down and plays and plays hard. Um, you know, we, I want to say he had some uh, a couple big plays today. Um, uh, hit, some, hit some long passes with him today. So, um, you know, he, he's – doing the things we expected out of him. You know, he really is a hard worker. I like his attitude and he's improving. John Long. Let's see. Mark, a lot of these national publications have been putting out these rankings of college football coaches and you're moving up that leaderboard. And I know from a personal standpoint, you don't pay much attention to those, but it is important in recruiting. So I was hoping you could just comment on your thoughts on your positioning and in, in some of those rankings. Um, you know, John, it, you, you want your program to be recognized for the growth that you have and the improvements uh, that you've made, you know, over the years. And, and really that's, what's important is just uh you know, the brand and, and the national recognition of your program, not so much individually. Um, it's just like the, the preseason rankings and things. If we listened to that, we wouldn't have done the things we've been doing. So we're really concentrating on ourselves, and, you know, constantly trying to grow the program. And, and certainly some of that helps, uh, again, from a program standpoint, uh, the individual things, um, really don't put any, any stock in that whatsoever. I just continue to try to do, you know what I'm going to do. I'm going to try to put my head down go to work and, and, and grow this program and get better each and every day. And that really is the, the mentality without being too much of a cliche, but uh, it's uh, bring the lunch pail, go to work, get the program better. And, and uh, you know, because if you're down and out, nobody's going to feel sorry for you. And uh, if things are going good. You better keep things in check and constantly try to improve. So we always try to keep an even kill perspective around here. All right, we got two more, Jeremy and then John Hale. Hey, Mark, what kind of conversations have you had about the best way to try and protect the players on the road? Obviously, there's some, there's a little bit of interaction with the dining and, 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 and bus drivers and those kind of people. Have you thought about trying to maybe see if you can take your own people or do you just trust the process that these organizations are, are doing what's, you know, recommended by CDC and – well, other groups. yeah, it's a good question. Without getting into too much detail, uh, Jeremy, because we'll be picked apart for it, as you know, and we are continuing to work through that. But the, the, part of your question, the answer is yes. Uh, yes, we're looking at all those things, bringing our own people, bringing our own buses, bringing more buses, spreading it out. Meals are going to be different. The team meals are not going to be the same. We haven't had a team meal all through camp. You know, we ha we, we're, we're not able to uh, get in there as a group. So, um, we will continue to, to be as effective as we possibly can and as safe as we possibly can. Um, again, this past week, I don't know if – Tony, Tony, did you guys release the numbers on the, on the university or not? Uh, the overall. Fashion. The overall. Yeah, not the but it was like 1.9 or whatever it was or whatever. Our, our, per, our percentage is, is still good. It's low. And um, I appreciate our players um, – you know, we're, we're, we're trying to be perfect. We're trying to do things as good as we can. Um, but um, it's been under control. Hopefully we'll keep it that way. And uh, our, our percentages are low. And, uh, and, and uh, the guys have been coming back healthy. So I hope it stays that way. All right, we'll finish up. John Hale. 
Mark, as we get closer to the opener, are you to the point yet where you have to change those backup quarterback reps at all because of Joey's uncertainty and, and not knowing if he's going to be available to start the season? We'll, we'll work through that. We, we, we uh, have some time still. But, yeah, getting to this week, you got to start making some adjustments, yes. All right, thanks, everybody. We'll get the players in here. Appreciate it.